Hello and welcome to India Top Doctor. Today we will talk about mammogram and about its myth and facts. And for that, we are going to invite Dr. Avni Skandhan KB, a lead consultant, a gynecologist and quality chief as to Mimes Portican. She's an active academician and loves teaching. She upholds her responsibility towards the society and strives to create awareness in the society in whichever manner possible. She is very active in Kerala IRIA and Lions Club International. She has a social media venture towards body positivity, This Is Me, which can be found at the rate This Is Me underscore Avni. She believes mammograms are less understood, under accepted, and under unlisted. With the capability of picking up cancers early and saving lives, these should be promoted widely, and she is actively committed to the cause. So let's welcome her. So welcome to India Top Doctor, ma'am. As you know, today we'll be talking about mammogram. So before we move ahead, can you tell us a brief about what is mammogram? Okay. Um, mammogram, like we are all used to doing a lot of x-rays in our routine practice. We uh, have an injury, we go into an x-ray. So x-ray is something which we are used to. So mammogram is nothing but taking an x-ray. The only thing is it is done for the breast. And the machine for it is different from what we take for the regular uh, x-rays. It's different from the regular x-ray machine. It's a machine that is specifically made for doing x-rays of the breast. It uses very a minimal amount of radiation. So it is just basically the x-ray of breast. That is what we mean by a mammogram. That is the x-ray mammogram. When we just blindly say mammogram, we mean it's an x-ray mammogram. But there's also something known as a sonomammogram, which means an ultrasound of the breast. But the term mammogram in general is used only for the x-ray. And then we use MRI mammogram for uh, MRI of the breast. So basically mammogram is literally means a study of the breast. And when we just use the term mammogram, it means an x-ray mammogram. Okay, So we okay. can do an x-ray ultrasound and MRI. But x-ray is what we mean by a mammogram. All right. And how accurate is when we do an x-ray of mammogram, how accurate is it? Um, I wouldn't, it, it is the most sensitive. It is the one, my mammogram, why we do it is it's basically for an early detection of cancer. So even though we say that it is the most sensitive in detecting cancer earlier, it is not very, very accurate. It is definitely not 100% accurate. It has an accuracy level from about 85 to 90%. So amongst the other modalities that are there, mammogram is considered the one of the most sensitive uh, methods by which you can early have an early detection of your cancer. So that is why we recommend doing it regularly. Say that it can cause abnormality to mammogram. Any disruptions? Any disruptions? while taking an exam? Uh, yes, 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 yes. So actually, when we do a mammogram, what we suggest to the ladies is that they should not wear uh, Dio sprays or they should, I think that is what you intend by the question. When we get the mammogram image, it's basically everything in radiology mostly is black and white. And mammogram is said to be sensitive because it picks up something like very small, fine, white colored densities, which is micro calcifications, which is in the range of say one millimeter, it is that small. So for us to be able to pick up that small a density, we should not have anything that is causing a issue in the image. There should be nothing that is, you know, uh, adding an image or any artifact, we call it an artifact into the image. So because of that, we recommend that the ladies should not put any Dio spray or powder or any perfumes because these things can cause this kind of an artificial appearance of this powdery kind of a thing, which can be mistaken later for a microcalcification. So we try to tell them if, if they have come with a prior appointment, we always tell them to not put any of these kind of things. And if they have put, we always ask them to wipe it off, especially because we have a tendency to do it in our underarms and goes to the breast region also. So we always ask them to wipe it off prior to doing the mammogram. So it can cause this uh, confusions during uh, when we are assessing the mammogram. And is the process can be a little painful? It can be painful, but it is not painful to an extent where we say that you don't we don't want to do a mammogram the reason being as a part of the physiological process itself 
a female tends to have tender breasts at times. So there will be many of you or many of us who have tender breasts during our periods and just prior to the periods. So what is suggested is, especially those ladies who are having tender breasts, it is advisable for them to do the mammogram two weeks after their periods. So that part would be less painful. The reason being, when we do the mammogram, we do not want the breast to move. Breast is a soft and uh, relatively mobile structure. So we do not want any movement. So what is done is there's a platform where the breast is placed and there's a paddle which compresses it. So we do, that is to avoid any movement. But when the breast is tender, this compression by the paddle becomes painful for those tender breasts. So you, when you do it at a time when your breasts are not tender, it's actually not painful. So we should just time it in a way that we can have uh, the lady in the cycle where she's not having a tender breast, which is ideally two weeks post her cycles. All right. And ma'am, does a mammogram expose one to an unsafe level of radiation? Actually, mammogram is using radiation, but it is not using the radiation, the kind that we use for the normal x-rays. It's a very, very, very minimal dose of radiation that is used. So it is not unsafe. It is not um, um, an unsafe level of radiation as we would describe it. But the thing is, um, when you look at the weightage, anyways, we say radiation has its own side effects. But when you look at the weightage of, you know, which is better, you weigh both the pros and cons. And when you see, you will realize that the chances of mammogram picking up the uh, cancer so early and you being uh, cancer free, especially now with the rise of cancer, um, in our society, even in our society. Earlier, it was only in the Western society, but now even in India, it's coming up a lot. So when we are able to detect it, this minimal dose of radiation, actually, you know, we can forego that amount of radiation because it has a lot of benefits in place of that. So it's not an unsafe amount, definitely. Okay, so that's a, re a relief to know. And ma'am, during the process of mammogram, what happens if a lump is found? Okay, so uh, I think I would like to say something about what types of mammogram are there so that then I can explain this a bit more to you. When we say mammogram, we have two types of mammograms. In the sense, the process is exactly the same, but we have two terminologies that we use. One is a diagnostic mammogram, meaning that the lady has felt something. It's We are trying to reach a diagnosis to it. So the lady has felt a lump or maybe she has a nipple discharge, or maybe she had some skin thickening. She's having nipple in drawing. In drawing means the nipple gets pulled inwards, or she has some axillary uh, swellings, or that is underarm swellings. Any kind of changes that the lady feels, or she has gone for a checkup and the doctor has found something. Either ways, one of the things that you're finding, and then you are getting a mammogram to understand what is a problem, is when we term it as diagnostic mammogram. So that is when you already have a problem, you know you have an underlying problem. Screening mammogram is a mammogram that we suggest is a, just a screening process. It's a totally asymptomatic normal lady coming to you. It is just to rule out that she doesn't have anything. So that kind of a screen, a screening mammogram, when the lady comes to you, you, you might still incidentally find a lump, which is very small for you to act lump in the sense of swelling, which is very small for you to palpate and find out or uh, which, which she never knew existed before that. So either way, the process of how you're going to go further from here is going to be the same. Once you see there's a lump, we have a way of categorizing. We see the appearance, we see the margins, how it looks like, what kind of uh, things it's doing to the adjacent structures. If there is uh, any changes, like I mentioned, that small calcifications, that small densities, any of these things, if we see, based on that, we have a grading system known as BIRADS. And based on this grading system, we determine or stratify whether how uh, much risk of the, the potential of, you know, this lesion becoming a malignancy or cancer, how high is the risk we will be able to determine by stratifying based on this. There's a pro proper stipulated pattern by which we determine. If these features are there, then we put it into this category. And based on which category it comes in, if we feel it is having a chances of it being malignant or cancerous, then we ask to do a sampling. Sampling means they put in a stick in a needle into that and they take the sample from that. So that is a final diagnosis because that gives you the pathology. So for that, you know, for sure, if it is a benign means it's a non-cancerous or a cancerous growth, you can tell for sure once you get the sample from it. 
So for that, final diagnosis is that. But some lesions, when you see with all the features you stratified, you know for sure it is a very benign looking thing. Just leave it alone. You don't need to worry. So those kind of lesions, we don't bother. We just say that it's benign. And if the patient is very concerned, we can probably follow it up after a year or two. That's it. Those kind of lesions are left alone. It depends on how it looks on the mammogram. Okay. So we talked about the whole procedure. Can you tell our audience what happens after the procedure is done? This is what happened. Like what I just now told you is what happens after the procedure is done. That is, we take a sample from, if you find something, we take a sample. If, if you find something and you find that it is possibility of cancer or it is you're not able to tell for sure if it is cancerous or non-cancerous, those times we take a sample from that area. And that sample is sent for pathology and pathological finding is the one which finally determines the diagnosis. It is the one finally which tells you. And sometimes it happens that when you try to stick in a needle, maybe the lesion is too small, too deep, you're not able to reach it. So if so, we um, also have the process of it, that area being excised. Sometimes it happens that we go for a pathology, you take a sample, it doesn't hit there. So um, it means it's, it might be a very small, sometimes that is why we are doing a screening mammogram so that we pick it up in the earlier stages. So it might happen that, you know, you're still very suspicious on a mammogram and the pathology comes that it is not um, a cancerous growth, but you're so sure by seeing the mammogram that it is possibly cancerous. That time we suggest the surgeon to take a sample from there. So they operatively take the sample from there. And uh, so many times it happens that, you know, you get a very early diagnosed cancer. There's nothing that has come in there. It's just the early changes and you have been able to take it off. So it gets restricted there. Then that lady is a free lifelong. So it's, it's a very, 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 um, what do you call, nice way of picking up things very early so that we can stop, arrest the progress there itself rather than it going. All right, ma'am. Thank you so much for so, for so many useful information. Any last message you would like to give to our audience? Yeah, actually the recommendations of how we do the mammogram is very important because um, in India, we don't have, in, in, in the Western countries, there is the government set of uh, practices are there. Like supposing in NHS, they have their own set of practices where they call in the ladies for the mammogram. It is a thing that the government provides. But in India, the awareness about mammogram is very low because of which the ladies do not come and volunteer. And especially because there's a lot of fear about mammogram. The people who know think that it's painful or have radiation. And then the, there's the rest of the people who don't know about it. So the fact is mammogram uh, is having radiation, but it is not significant enough to you to cause you damage. It's going to cause you more benefits than damage. And the recommended way of doing a mammogram is after 40 years, the lady should have an annual mammogram. This is to ensure because the risk of you getting a cancer in your breast is higher as your age progresses. So it is always recommended to have an annual mammogram at least in the first five years after the age of 40. And after that, if you find that your mammograms have been consistently normal, then you can probably do it intermittently between two to three years gap. And whenever you're taking a mammogram, it's always advisable for you to carry your prior mammograms with you. Because uh, with the age, we ourselves know that the lady's breast changes with age, the appearance changes. Earlier it's firm and then it starts to loosen up. That's because the tissue consistency changes. In the same way, the mammogram consistency also changes with the age. So uh, a tissue which has changed from the gland or the thick part or the rigid part that we see in the young age group, once it has changed into fat and next mammogram you see suddenly again something is seen in that area, then we have to be concerned because that has already become into fat in this age, a lady who is progressing in her age, it has already changed in texture, then it should never go back to the previous state. If it has gone back, that means there's something going there. So that might be the only subtle way in which you can uh, pick up an abnormality. So it is not that always a person has a prior mammogram, but if you do have, always carry your images for comparison because the progressive changes in the breast is very important to, to analyze. The next thing that we have to remember is for the younger age groups, normally mammogram is not suggested because one thing, it, the chances of getting cancer is very low. Second thing is normally the, the younger breast tends to be more 
uh, more glandular, we say. So because of that, the chances of we picking up the lesions is low in mammogram. But sometimes the doctor might see something, find something suspicious and ask you. So there's no need to be concerned. Mammogram is perfectly safe. Mammo it has minimal amount of radiation, but not enough to cause your damage. And mammogram has a huge benefit because it picks up the abnormalities before an ultrasound and an MRI can do. MRI can pick up, but MRI is not easily available and it's much more costlier. It's not very accessible. Ultrasound picks up a lesion after you find a problem or there is a lump or a swelling that has come is when uh, ultrasound picks up the changes. A, a mammograms do it way earlier. So we being aware of the importance of mammogram is very important as ladies, especially or if it is a male who is listening, making your family members aware of it is very important. They have to get a mammogram, an annual mammogram post 40 years, especially. And another very important finding a point is that if you have a family history of mammogram, especially if you have a sibling or your mother, first degree relative who is having cancer breast or any cancer for that matter, the chances of you developing a CA is higher. So it is always advisable that you start at an earlier age. Talk to your doctor, get to know what is the age of starting if you have a family history, which age you should start screening and make it a practice to give priority to your health. Getting an annual mammogram is, uh, it is not a very hard thing. It gives you a lot of benefits if you pick it up in the earlier stage rather than lamenting about it later. So it's always good to be aware and make people around you aware of the fact that mammogram helps you. So it will help you pick up things very early. And I'm very uh, thankful that you people are doing such an important thing because this is an important message to the society. So thank you for doing that. Also. Right, ma'am. And thank you so much for this wonderful session. It was really great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.